Here's the thing that's got me confused, questioning, doubting, forgiveness. On that cross, in this day of grace, when you get saved, in Christ, vicariously, you die to sin. Basically, basically, you and everything you are, all your sins, all your filthy sins, died in Christ. And when Christ rose from the dead and ascended to God's right hand, there you are, vicariously. Read the epistles of Paul. You're dead to sin, vicariously. And the Holy Spirit comes into the, the, your spirit to work this out in your life to make you righteous as Christ is righteous. All that righteousness that Christ had when he rose from the dead, that's all yours. It's all yours. That, 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 that's your bank account. And all that filthy sin you did, gone, 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 gone. Forever. But what about when Jesus said to pray, Father, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. What about the man who was forgiven, but he went out and would not forgive his fellow servant, and God, un God literally unforgave him? What the hell's going on? Notice in Paul's epistles, not even in oh, the only places in the Bible is Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's not the Gospels. Where it's mentioned, you have to forgive to be forgiven. Not even the Peter and James say mention this in their writings. Or Jude. Paul, he, he inverts it. He inverts the theology and says, instead, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Paul inverts it and says, forgiving one another, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has brackets already unbrackets forgiven you. This makes you kind of doubt. If Jesus is real, because and it gives me makes me question: Is Christian was did, Chris, did Paul keep Christianity from dying? And it was a did Paul was Paul was, was Paul the Christianity was what Brigham Young was the Mormonism, the teachings of Joseph Smith are have been let relegated to the the end section. It's Brigham Young that made Mormonism what it is today. This really disturbs me. Is there other ways God can forgive you? Is, how about when Stephen said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Can God, when you stand before him in judgment, if you, if you don't get saved to the great white throne judgment, can he have sins forgiven you that will not add to your lake of fire? But because the stain of sin was not removed by the cross of Christ, you will not be allowed in the heaven because you got sin in you. Is that two types of forgiveness? One for the age of grace, and I I cannot see what if you don't forgive your fellow man, your fellow, your fellow Christian or your fellow man, and you're in Christ, seen vicariously in the right hand of God. If you refuse to, if you refuse to forgive. Will God yank you out of Christ and throw your ass into hell? And don't have me this shit. Oh, if you've truly saved, you will truly, you will forgive. If you don't forgive, that means you were never saved in the first place. Jesus didn't say that, bitch. Jesus said, Jesus said, forgive and you shall be forgiven. If you forgive not, if, if you don't, if you've been, the parable says, the man was forgiven, but he didn't forgive. So God unforgave him. Jesus did not say, if you have been forgiven by me, you will forgive others. No, he didn't say that. He said, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. If you, give, if, you give, if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. This really disturbs me. What would Jesus say if he heard Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul's theology about we die in Jesus Christ. 
and are resurrected with Jesus Christ. He did say, and if, and if I if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. So that seems to say that we died in Jesus Christ. But the doubts just keep coming. Did Jesus really say that in John? Because John was the last gospel written. And some say words were put in Jesus' mouth. Jesus' mouth. Hell, even R.C. Sproul, famed Calvinist, says he does not believe Jesus said John three sixteen. He said he believed the author of John put that in as a footnote. Uh, but the previous verse said, "Ever notice that uh, John three fifteen is all uh, is almost is word for word, but John three sixteen except John three fifteen does done does not have for God so loved the world before it." Man, I'm so disappointed in Jesus. Jesus did not say that. Man, that just kills it for me. I still believe in Jesus, but you know, fuck it, man, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Let me get. Let me ask you a story. This per, this mother has a son. She's been praying all that son's life that that that, that this son would get saved. He's been living a rebellious life, sinning like hell. She's been praying hard. One well, well he starts to get under conviction. Conviction. He says, uh, Mom, I'm coming to church this Sunday. I want to get saved. She says, You can get saved now. He's like, No, I need I need to talk. Uh, I need, I, I want to come. I'm not ready to get saved. I, I, she, he says, Whatever. I want to get saved. So she, he said, She agreed. He, but that Saturday night, he goes out. He's murdered. Before he can get saved. Well, they can't find the murder, but guess what? He gets saved, and he turns himself in, and he begs for that mother to forgive him. But according to that mother, he sent her son to hell. He was going to go to church Sunday and get saved. But because he murdered her, he, in essence, sent him to hell. She refused to, refuses to forgive him. So what? When she dies, is she reunited with her son in the flames of hell because she refused to forgive him? Because she refused to forgive her son's murder for sending her son to hell. Does God unforgive her, yank her position, heavenly position out of Jesus Christ, and cast her into the pits of hell? I guess God expects us to love him so much that if... He sends one of our loved ones to hell. We say, if this, we should, God expects and demands just to say, well, if, if it's for your glory, God, so be it. I don't like it, but praise you, praise your name anyways. Are we supposed, how much are we supposed to love God? Does God expect us to love us so much that he is not recognizing me solely so much at the point that if we had the choice, Either God could go out of existence, or we would choose to be damned forever and ever and burn forever so that he could go on forever, if, if it was possible. Are we, are we expected by God to love him so much that we'd take his place? Hell, God, our love for God is greater than God's love for us. Let me ask you this. If God knew, if God... Could if it, it were, if it was if it was possible that God could burn in hell forever and ever and ever his own hell, but it would mean every other creature would be saved and love him even though he he was in hell. Or let's say a me member of the Trinity. If it meant God the Father would be burning in hell forever and ever, but God the Son and God the Spirit would still be God. But everybody would be saved and glorify the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit even, even, even though the Father was in hell. Would God love us so much that he would say yes? 
Well, now that's impossible because God is God cannot become anything less than what he is. But as a man, Jesus Christ. Would he be, Paul the Apostle says, he'd be willing, he was willing to be accursed from Christ for the salvation of his fellow Israelites. He was, my, now mom said that was hyperbole. He didn't, he was just using an exaggeration. But what if he did mean it? Would Paul, Paul, if he did mean it, Paul had been willing to burn in hell forever and ever to save his fellow Israelites. And so we got, I curse the Holy Ghost if I look, if I, my face look like, face looks like this, big and fat and, and manly, not boyish. I curse the Holy Ghost my, if my face does not look sexy and boyish, but manly and big. In middle age, I curse the Holy Ghost if it does. If I do not have my season be young looking, like a hot guy in the long form, and we say in the end, I curse the Holy Ghost if I do not get this. I swear the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I curse the Holy Ghost if I do not become a good looking guy. A boyish, young looking guy with the long forms. And be saved. If that was God's plan for me originally. Yeah, no, if I am be saved, period. Unless I'm not saved now. And never was saved. But. If God could become anything less than what he is, would he be willing to burn in hell for, for the salvation of every one of us all? Just how great is God's love for us? I, I think on a congruency scale, our love for God is going to be greater than his love for us. On a scale of actions. Just because God is big and badder, bigger than us, doesn't mean his love is greater than, than our love. Unless I'm getting something seriously wrong. If God could become anything less than what he was, would he be willing, willing to sacrifice his existence for us? If God is good, the reason God can't do it now because he is Everything he is a source of life. He can't abdicate that place. Would he be willing to do so? If he, if if God was hypothetically less than what he is now, would he be willing to sacrifice himself for the rest of to save the rest of us? Hell, yeah, he expects us. Apparently, he expects us to be willing to burn it out his his hell if necessary. To keep him on the throne. And look, don't you dare cast make cast to get me for asking any quote unquote foolish questions. If God is truly all knowing, there is an answer to these questions. And if God refuses to address these questions, it's because he's scared of these questions. He's scared that his answer might well, may, may make us view him less than we view, we view him now. He, maybe he's not ready to answer those questions for us. Maybe he has to wait till we we're holy to him and can't turn away from him because we would turn away from him if we knew the answers in this present state. But the question is, how do you reconcile the teachings of Jesus Christ? Forgive and you shall be forgiven. If you forget not if you've if we've been forgiven and don't forgive your fellow man, God will unforgive you, according to that parable. How do you reconcile that with the glorious grace of God taught by the Apostle Paul? That once you are in Christ, you hidden your life is hid with Christ and God. Your sins are, your sins are dead. The fact that you are a sinner is even dead. God looks at you and he sees the reason of Christ. Now it's up to hope that the Holy Spirit who lives in, within you to make that a reality in your body, soul, and spirit. So what's the fucking answer, folks? And look, return good for evil. I know I'm using foul language, but don't use as an ex my roughness as an excuse. 
uh, refuse. Don't use that tough love as an excuse not to love me, but just because you have to be tough to love me. So you, instead, you use tough love, tough love, and just throw me to the wolves because oh, he's wait, wait, wait till he. I curse the Holy Ghost. I curse you, Holy Ghost, for my face and head looks like this. Not boys and boys. I curse you. If I do not have a boy's face, but I curse you, Holy Ghost, to hell if you have I have a manly face and not a boy's face.